G'day, welcome to the Take Math Channel, I'm Josh. One of the main questions my students ask me when we're doing combinations and permutations and we're using factorials is this one right here. Why is zero factorial equal to one? Which is a great question, and I'm gonna explain by going through a quick recap of what a factorial is. So say for instance, we were to think of what five factorial is. Five factorial, we're gonna start with five here, and then what we do is we multiply by every number beneath that descending by one each time. So five times four times three times two times one. And if you work that out, that is equal to 120. So five factorial is 120. Now we can continue this on. So we can work out now four factorial. Four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one, which is equal to 24. Uh, continuing this now to three factorial. Three factorial is going to equal three, that number right there. Multiply by two, multiply by one. That's equal to six. Two factorial, you've probably got the hang of these already, it equals two times one, which is equal to two. And we have one factorial, which is just one by itself there. And that is equal to one. But now what we have is this question here. Why do we have zero factorial equaling one? And I'm gonna show you this right now First off with a pattern and then using a bit of maths here. So if we have a look first off at five factorial and compare that to four factorial, you can see the difference is that we have multiplied this one by five and down here we haven't. So as we go from 120 to 24, the answer of each of those factorials, we can see that what we do is divide by five. Likewise, if we have a look at four factorial to three factorial, what we do to get from one answer to the other is we divide by four. Uh, three factorial to two factorial, from six to two, we divide by three, and from two factorial to one factorial, we are going to divide by two. You can see a bit of a pattern there, right? So for zero factorial, let's continue that pattern, where what we're going to do is divide by one. One divided by one, we get that zero factorial is equal to one. So as you can see, in order to maintain consistency and that pattern, zero factorial has to equal one. But that's not all. So let me show you this a little bit differently now just showing you the practical application of where we use factorials. Say for instance, we had three objects. Uh, we have an orange one, we have a green one, and we have a red one. Now we could use factorials in order to work out how many different ways we could order these. Uh, in how many different ways we could say select these out of a hat. And I'll give you this example right now. So we can work this out as three factorial. We know the answer already is going to be three times two times one, which is equal to six. But I'm gonna show you this in the order. So we could have the red one first, then we could have the orange one, then we could have the green one, we could have the red one first, then we could have the green one, then we could have the orange one, we could start with the orange one, then we could have the red one, then we could have the green one, we could start with the orange one, then we could have the green one, and then we could have the red one, and then finally we could have the green one, we could go to the red one, and have the orange one, and then we could have the green one, and we could have the orange one, and then the red one. And you can see that if we were selecting these out of a hat, we have six different ways that we could do this. And that's where factorials can get used. So, nice and easy. What about if we had two things that we were selecting? Say we only had a red one and a green one here. Well, no surprise to think that this is two factorial. Two factorial, which is equal to two times one. So that's equal to two. Let me show you the different ways we could do this. We could have a red one, and then a green one, or we could have a green one and a red one. As I said, two different ways that you could sort these out. What about we have a look at if we only had one object, just a red object? Well, how many different ways can we arrange that red object? Well, that's equal to one factorial. We can only do it one way. Now, say we had absolutely no objects. So what about if I had zero objects? I have zero objects. How many different ways can I arrange them using this logic here? And that's gonna be worked out using zero factorial. We can arrange them one way. As you can see, if I have no objects down here, the different number of ways that we can arrange them is one. Okay, it's the same way every time. And there you go, that is why zero factorial is equal to one. Just that pattern works, and also mathematically, as you can see here, it works there. Now, I know this is gonna have a few people up in arms, and what I'd really like you to do is if you don't like this video, like the thunder that's about to be in the background. Yeah, I knew that was about to happen because the lightning went off. Like that thunder, get down in the comments and leave a comment telling me what you thought. But if you do like the comment, you know, don't be like the thunder, leave something nice. 
Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe as I compete over the thunder there. Big shout out to my patrons and all my subscribers. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.